Hi everyone, Coach Sullivan here again from MJS Coaching Football. My background, this is my 38th year coaching football. I've either been the defensive, offensive, or special teams coordinator, as well as the head coach at both the collegiate and high school levels. This presentation, we're going to go back into what we call the dog blitz family, or the dog family itself. Okay, uh, only this time, our whip Safety is going to be the dog blitzer, okay? And so the first thing I'd like to do is just kind of go over a few things relative to the color coding and, and the dog family rules themselves, okay? Red is the primary blitzer. Blue is the secondary blitzer. And the green, with arrows in this case, are part of the blitz. The... the uh, Stud, the defensive end in this case, away from the call, could also be green because if it were a pass, he'd be rushing the passer in outside cage mode, hence making it a one, two, three, four, five man pressure. Okay. But what I want to emphasize in this is that these are the four in color, are the four off the side. Okay. So the dog family premise again, we get four off a side. So for the uh, defensive end, the side of the call, and the nose, it's the same as a go family blitz, a combo family blitz. They're on the side of the call, reduce the side, which means defensive end, slant to B, nose, slant A to the call. And when they slant, the technique means to penetrate after you step it near hip, which is the guard. Okay? So what I will get to momentarily is the linebacker who is what we call C scrape but first just very quickly you need to go to the zone blitz coverage playlist to see more about trio but since the safety's blitzing it still doesn't change the fact that the safeties are replacing so in this case the whip is on the left because it's a rip which is the pass strength so the free in the field go to the pass strength Okay, even if number two motioned across and changed the pass strength, okay, we would rope it and the whip would still blitz and then the safety would replace him because he'd be over number two. So everything stays consistent. Again, you need to see previous playlists on base uh, defense, how we rotate and adjust to motion, okay, other playlists. So now I want to focus on the technique of the safety who's blitzing in this case it's the whip whenever we signify it's a name of a position whip that person blitzes no matter what okay in another uh, presentation when it's called cowboy that just means it's the corner but it could be either one so for us when we specifically give a name to the position whether it's whip free okay dime rover mike backer that defender blitzes no matter what when they are named, okay? So the whip's going to blitz no matter what because it's a whip dog. The screw timing is the key, huge, okay? So it's not just the football. This involves both film study. It involves paying attention during pregame. It involves paying attention during the course of the game, especially if there's a change at quarterback. And what I mean is, in the case of the gun here, if the quarterback pumps his fist down, is it rhythmic after that? If the quarterback lifts his foot, is it rhythmic? Is there a clap and then the ball is snapped? Is there a fake clap and then a clap? Then the ball, you follow what I'm trying to say here? So is it when the quarterback puts his arms up in front of him and then within a second? Okay, these are all what we call snap indicators, okay? So this is huge. The timing is everything, and some kids just don't ever get really good at it, no matter how many tangible things you can give them to go on. So if a kid can't get it, he can't get it, then you don't run it, okay? Well, let's just assume that they can get it for now. So let's just say, for an example, because we're getting more and more of this myself, when the quarterback puts his hands up to catch the snap, usually within a count, the ball is snapped. So we would tell the whip, when a quarterback hands go up, 
start to screw down. And then as you're screwing down, see the football. So you stay on sides. And again, the landmark, if the ball, if they freeze and hold the snap, then you want to stop at the butt of the rover. So you're always on sides. Okay. This opposite safety, in this case, the free, doesn't rotate until the ball is snapped. So if they hold the count, he doesn't rotate. He stays. Because if he does rotate, then it's you're confirming that one of two things. One, safety is, in fact, blitzing. Or two, we've got a whole different run box, and so they may check the play over here. Okay? So we want to do our best not to help the offense. In this case, the quarterback. Okay? So assuming that the player gets the timing, hands come up, screws down, sees the football now. Ba-boom! The landmark, as is the case for all dog blitzes, this is what we call a D crash. That is the reminder to attack the deepest tip in the backfield. So in the case of pistol, he's attacking the hip of the running back. Because both run and pass, the whip has contained, or okay, outside cage and versus pass, force versus run, sky support. Okay? So the dash line means if the running back were to flare, automatic peel. The running back does anything else, meaning goes away, goes up, goes under. He continues on to the quarterback. Okay, we have an inside linebacker hot on the running back. Okay, so that's what the technique and the aiming points and how we try and teach the timing for our safeties. And again, we teach them both because they both have their own blitzes. Okay, even the free has one, free dog. So we teach them both. All right. Now the C scrape. Literally, the aiming point is the outside fin, you know, show outside of the shoulder pad of the tackle, hence C. Okay, there's no hedging, but on the snap, he starts to, to arc to that C gap area, that landmark. Okay. If it's a pass. And the tackle fans out. He goes butt side, so into the B gap. That's the key. Butt side of the tackle. If the tackle pass sets and it's, let's say, a full uh, turn back protection, he stays in the C gap. If it's a run of any kind, stay in the C gap. Okay? Stay there. Okay? Does everybody understand me so far, I hope? All right. So <clears throat> the other aspect of this. We call it in a definite pass situation. This is a change up to stop inside zone, outside zone to the tight end, to stop one back power to the tight end versus a two back set. It's a change up to stop two back power, two back toss, okay, two back lead outside zone, all those things. Okay, so it's a pretty nice blitz, but it's it's really good versus pass. All right. So <clears throat> The other aspect of this, when the uh, ball goes away, let's just say it goes away on a run, the dog blitzer does have the boot. So because he has can outside cage, because he has force, he also has the boot. So he does not bend and chase, right? He's not spilling. He's forcing and boot, force and boot, force and boot, which is different than the C crash in a go or a combo. Okay. The uh, other linebacker who was hot to running back, if that running back does flare, so it's the automatic peel, now he will mirror the quarterback and be available if the quarterback is forced to tuck it and run and scramble. Okay. Because we got hots everywhere else in coverage with a deep third, middle third safety defender. Okay. So this is nice to emphasize uh, the safeties also blitz. And again, it, it, it's, a, it's a blitz that you don't run very often. You can't make a living off of it. And you definitely need kids who know how to time it up and can, as we say, hit it on the run. But that involves us as coaches. If we can pick up in pregame, if there's a segment of the cadence, like if there's, every time there's a color, the ball is snapped. Soon after, that's the only stuff you can pick up in pregame. So you should have a coach charting that. 
as well as during the game. Are there any changes, especially when there's a change of quarterback, somebody in the press box or a player who's hurt with a clipboard should be paying attention to any changes in the cadence because that'll help your players when it comes to the blitz. As always, please, if there are any questions, feel free to reach out to me at CoachMJSullivan at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to get back to you.